the next day after you like do the deed, like, do you feel anything? Do you feel like she needs to put herself first and be like, you don't stand a chance. I don't think you deserve Chloe. Hey guys, welcome back to Cards Catch Up with E! News. There's a star in this episode, you guys, and his name is Tristan Thompson. Tristan! He's doing the rounds. Chloe has to sit through yet another conversation. Painful. Can I add painful? I have a lot of respect for your whole family, so I feel like it's important for me to, you know, go down the line and, and speak to everyone, and whether they want to hear it or not, I would feel better expressing my truth to them. In this family, if you do something to one of us, it affects everyone. It's not some small thing that happened. She's over it, but here she is, like you say, Cole, taking one for the team, as she freaking does, and carrying the show on her back. We just found out from Chloe that Kendall wants nothing to do with him. I was like, I'm not kicking you out. I just, Kendall doesn't like you very much. Love you, Kendall. Yes, Kendall. Kylie has been having an issue with him, and like she said, she knows that he saw what she said on the show. This was just really unforgivable. First, we see Tristan go over to Kylie's. Chloe even said, like, you really owe her this conversation, and it's because, obviously, one of the cheating situations happened with her best friend, Jordan. So they sit down and talk, and by the way, Kylie even gets emotional at a point when Tristan is kind of saying that he wants True to be, like, proud of her father. I never want my daughter to go to school and, like, talk so great about me, then a little kid comes and says, oh, well, your dad is like this, 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 and she'll be embarrassed. Yeah. And that will break my heart because mm -hmm. she views me as such a high regard. Oh, Tristan. High, you know, so like that's like the stuff You're that motivates make me. Cry. Me. I'm sorry. I, I'm not trying to. And it's like, didn't work on me. Chloe needs a dating musician like Courtney so she can go on an actual tour. Instead, she's over here on an apology tour with Tristan that she wants nothing to do with. And is it even an apology tour when Tristan is making the Kardashians apologize for him? The conversation he had with Kylie Jenner where we finally got to see the moment we've been waiting for was Kylie's real reaction to an end of a friendship with Jordan. And he's like, oh, really? Well, can you apologize for me? Because he's probably blocked on everything. Well, let her know I apologize for, you know, you know, whatever, you know, she went through a lot during that time too and probably gave yeah. her a lot of flack. So hopefully she'll relay that message to Jordan because it affected a lot of people. I know, he's like, tell her I'm sorry because she probably like caught some shit. It's like, yeah, you think? But I did like what Kylie said because it did sound like she was saying like, obviously this didn't happen for a reason and wouldn't wish this upon Chloe. But at the end of the day, she was like, Jordan and I were so codependent. She was living in my house. Like she needed to grow. We needed to go our separate ways. I think I was so codependent with Jordan that mm. I could have never imagined in my life without her yeah we would have probably still been like living together and yeah. i think she needed to grow without me i needed to grow without her i feel like that was kylie's way of saying like i'm good and you know what was made me so ew to my stomach hearing tristan talk to chloe and courtney and him have to repeat you understand what i'm saying you understand what i'm saying you know what i'm saying you know what i'm saying yeah. you know what i'm saying yeah. you know what i'm saying you know what i'm saying, you know yeah. what I'm saying? no one gives a what you're saying, Tristan. Like, and by the way, no, we don't. Yeah, no one does. And no one cares. <laughs> Unforgivable still. I don't care if you did therapy. I'm sorry. I'm just, I can't. Tristan's next conversation is with Corny. I love how Corny said in the confessional that like he wanted to talk in Palm Springs and she was like, let me eat Cheetos and live. When we were in Palm Springs for Easter, Tristan kept referencing his life and his future with Chloe and he texted me the second he left my house asking to talk and I was trying to eat my Cheetos in peace and didn't want to go talk to him when I was in Palm Springs. So he comes to her house. Cute little court has a notepad that she didn't write a single word in. <laughs> and you know, he gets deep with Courtney too. He explains to her about his father and why he thinks he's acting this way. I think with therapy, I realized that my childhood upbringing, mm -hmm. what I saw from like my dad, how you treat my mom. Yeah. As a kid, when you see that, the trauma you have is because you can't protect your mom because you're so young. Mm -hmm. And because your mom tells it's going to be okay, you mm -hmm. basically numb your emotions of being scared or feeling sad. Mm -hmm. It's my form of the defense mechanism. And he says that to her because she asks, like, why do you think you do it? Do you feel bad? And he's like, yeah, I definitely feel bad the next day. Like, I am curious just as to like, I wonder if Tristan ever was like, I don't have remorse. No, so <laughs> that's, that's fair. The next day after you like do the deed, like, do you feel anything? 
for me personally, when, when I when I yeah. cheat, I feel disgusted the next day. But then, so then why do you do it again? And it's like, oh, he feels bad the next day. I would feel bad every single day, not just the next day. I mean, let's be honest. Every time he did what he did, he couldn't give a flying F if he got caught. What he did was like wild. The nuzzling at the club. Jordan is Kylie's best friend. A baby is gonna come out. Literally, it's gonna come out. <laughs> so as Tristan was talking to Courtney about how he grew up and didn't have the best example, he was also saying that his mom basically never put herself first. Okay, so then for Chloe, putting mm -hmm. Chloe, comparing her to your mom. Yeah. And thinking like you never had the mom who put herself first. Mm -hmm. But with Chloe, do you feel like she needs to put herself first and be like, you don't stand a chance? to be continued. Damn, I love a TBC. And the fact that we are leading up to, I don't think you deserve Chloe. Well, I think I can't tell. As, no, I know yeah. you can't tell yeah, her no, that. I think, I'm I just think... saying, but I don't think you deserve Chloe. Or no. the way the actions that you've done have been something that she's deserved. What is she gonna say in the next episode that is gonna be even more of a dagger to Tristan's what heart? What is he gonna say? How is he gonna say? I hope he says, you know what? She should put herself first. I think he's gonna say, you feel me? You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? No, he's not gonna say that. So another part of this episode, we do have Kimberly. She won't miss an episode, even though the B has a tight ass schedule and I ain't jealous of that schedule because I don't know when she's sleeping, but she is being overworked and part Part of this is her filming for American Horror Story in New York. There Kim is reading her lines for American Horror Story. Oh, that was a line. <laughs> then she flies off to New York. She has a gazillion things on her schedule. She can get in maybe four hours of sleep. And it's like, how does she do it all? I'm in New York and I have like back to back lined up things to do in these like two days that I'm here. This is a big day for you. You flew in this morning, right? Yeah. Did you get any sleep on the plane? Yeah, only four hours. Operating on four. She's having an acting coach class via Zoom at midnight. Like, could you imagine? It's a work day. Ended at six. I remember when Kim Kardashian said she saw on TikTok how tired she was at the scam's pop up. I looked on TikTok and saw me walking up to people, fans that I know and love. We have a whole month's life coming soon. Oh, oh my God. Telling them all of our skim secrets about how we're launching men soon. Actually, no recollection of this. Have no idea that I stopped at the Tiffany store and was posting all about it. I remember sticking up for her, being like, you guys, she's studying for the bar. She's flying all over the world. Well, Kim still does it all. I was worried about her for a moment when she was like, I'm feeling faint. I definitely feel a little bit like overwhelmed right now. Like, I can't breathe. I just feel like I need a breather. I don't have a minute. It's so many days of that in a row that I just can't catch up. I feel like faint and like just at this current moment, I'm like, oh my God, I just want to get in bed. But guess what? Even with her tight schedule and her not knowing that her sister happens to be in the same state as her at the same time, which was a story for another day. Him happened to be in New York City while we're in Brooklyn, Court texts me saying, hey, you're in New York, oh my God, we're in Brooklyn. She did find out that Courtney is in Brooklyn for the Blink-182 tour, and she hops on a heli, because according to them, it would take three hours to get to Brooklyn, which doesn't make sense, I live in New York, but that's cute. I don't know how I'd make it, and it was like a two or three hour drive. She, you know, made a big effort to be here, took a helicopter. It's just her excuse to order a helicopter to take her. <laughs> yeah. Girl, take a breather, okay? Your empires will keep empiring. So what did you guys think of episode eight of the Kardashians? Let us know in the comments below. And make sure to check out last week's recap in case you missed it. And don't forget to subscribe.